A loud noise? And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. I think I know. Yeah. I think it was the umbrella. Because you could see it in the crime scene photo. Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm shutting on some dangerous ground here. Ask for more details. Right. Uh, Mr. Wright. That loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. How do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Could it... Could it have been... Yes, could it have been... Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. There we go. He fell right on top of it and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? No, yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail. Kinda like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm. Miss Faye. What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Well, of course it's important. He says he fell onto the umbrella, but in the crime scene photo, it's not under him. It's in the background. This is it, Mia, the new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella cheap umbrella is more than important, it's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha, huh, how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. A dick. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. You got it. After I shoved him, he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. In which case, why is it over there and not underneath him? Ding ding. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right! The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. <laughs> no! Oh my god, his hair! Did he lose it? Order, order, order! The victim, he moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Ah, oh, his hair's starting to come undone. Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want it presented as evidence immediately. Ah, there we go. But the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. But, but <laughs> I know this matter of umbrella of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No, poor pain, poor guy. However, I still find it hard to believe that that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Hey! Got added. Nice. Well done, Mia! Uh-oh. Ah, uh, he's back to his old self. Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you have another witness. Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be... incontrovertible. Ooh. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean... Dolly? I do, Your Honor. 
the defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? Oh. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Hmph. <laughs> Ooh. Suave. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I, I don't know. I think this is a good point for us to stop at. To stop at, Cart will now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the, te to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh! April 11th, 11.52, District Court Defendant Lobby, number 3. My thoughts so far? Well, it's another Ace Attorney game, so it's incredible. <laughs> Plus, I've recently been watching the show, so it'll be interesting to see... See how different it is from the game? Or, like, how different from the show the game is, I mean. Because the game's obviously going to be more in-depth with the trials. Whereas the show condenses it to, like, 50 minutes. By the way. Miss Faye, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... I... It's alright. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious, after hiding such important facts. But... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh, what do you mean? She... She's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life. Huh. Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dolly and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Damn. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side, anyway. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. She'd been wearing it around her neck that day, but then... She took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, alright. It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Dolly is present, borrowed from Phoenix Wright. Uh, anyway... So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. <laughs> what a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? It, yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this cart house. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse. M murder? What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, okay. I do like the music of this game. This song's pretty damn cool. I like it. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is some relationship between these two cases, am I correct? Newspaper clipping added. Ooh. Hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I... I need to finish this myself. Ah, yes, but... I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look at the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to... be of... help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is about over. We better all get moving. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I really like this song. To be continued. What the heck? That's a different song. Sheesh. <laughs> a really different song. Uh, yes. I'm just used to the... I think that's a justice for all song for when you get to the end of a chapter. 
Okay. Oh, damn. We don't have Grossberg or his hemorrhoids. Hooray! Call will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Hmm? Oh, wow. They're both just like, Whoa! <laughs> it's a girl! What's with this stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. I can't believe he's actu he actually said that. Oh, uh, now then, witness, could you please state your full name? I, um... Don't worry, sweetie, there's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure. I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel. Oh my god. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Uh, thank you for calming my nerves. You are all so nice. I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior at literature in literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. What a suck up. Sheesh. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all mine. Well, we know who is Milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Ah, oh, wow. Uh, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever is on your mind. I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Feeney wouldn't kill anyone, I just know it. Yes, yes. I can see why you'd say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, alright. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around... her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. I mean, to be fair, she is... pretty damn cute. There ain't no lying there. What I witnessed... I've been planning to go back to Feeney's place after, after class was over. Feeney and Dougie. They were talking behind the building. Oh! Then suddenly, Dougie got all wobbly and just collapsed. <laughs> That's when Feeney noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students, and they called the authorities. Oh. Oh dear. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. Young lady. As old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But... But I... I would never. Hold it! That's more than enough witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. You haven't changed a bit. Wait, what? Me a fake? Huh? What's this? So you two are... acquainted? Yes, we've met before. Once. Uh, I'm confused. Was I in like a previous game? No. Well, whatever. In any case, Miss Faye, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Madame Faye. <laughs> Madam, I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. Whew. Right, so what she witnessed? Been planning to go back to Feeney's place after class was over. They were talking behind the building. He got all wobbly and just collapsed. She doesn't say that Phoenix pushed her. It pushed him, even. I mean, it's just strange. Yeah, no, I think what they're doing is making it so it's... I think it's so it's not 
done the way the game is, because as far as I can remember, the game is... It's like a case that's from before the events of the game, and then there's another one that's further in. So I think they just don't want to spoil stuff with the like later game things. I think. I'm not entirely sure. Because the way they did it, they did... Technically, the, anim the animation went case 2-1, case 3-2, Case 3-3, three, three. and then there's currently this the one that's on the train, which isn't part of the game, which I find to be really cool. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim. Is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Doggy. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. Hmm, so what should I do about her testimony just now? Show contradiction. Feeble lives are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? What? No, I, I would never... Oh, of course you would cry. <laughs> Miss Faye, I will not allow you to badger this witness. I believe the defense is engaged in a fishing expedition. Huh? That is, uh, she has no supporting... Please don't glare at me like that. I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. <laughs> the defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It's already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Although, to be fair, I don't understand why they didn't decide to just go with the same order that the game has. Because, for, for the most part, I would say that 90% of viewers of the animated series will be people that have played the game. At least that's what I think, anyway. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will. If you don't mind, I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Yay! Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Oh, I didn't look like they were fighting, I didn't hear any noise either. Okay! So wait, did she just have two? Didn't see the moment he pushed. Wait, she didn't hear a noise. Oh! You're wrong! Wait, is it this? The victim fell on top of his umbrella, there was a loud sound when this happened. Boom! You say you didn't hear any noise, is that correct? Yes, that's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. <laughs> that's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? Oh! Yeah, that's true. Oh no, I'm interested to see how it wraps up, but I'm... I'm sad because I get the feeling that these cases won't be until, like, the latter half. Or, like, really late into the show, which is kind of crappy because that's, like, two months away. Well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But I am interested to see how they do this, um, the case that's on the train, because that's one that's not in the game. That's one they made specifically for the show, which is really cool. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. I really want his hair to fall off. Just when he gets shocked, I just want it to all blow away. May I have a moment to answer? But by all means! I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. Oh, she's back to her calm and kiss-arsy self. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on, and I was listening to music at the time. Headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let off. 
but it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning. Huh. Yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. So I put my headphones on to block it out. I still love the fact that his hair has wobble physics. Look at that. Wobble wobble. Well, Your Honor. As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that totally ch c could cho totally, totally change this whole case. There was lightning. Eh. The lightning. Your Honor, there's a problem with the witness's testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? What about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now it's not the time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? <gasps> dun dun dun! That would be crazy. Can you imagine? Getting struck to death by lightning, of all things. I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy anyway? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. Mm. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? Alright, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that not guilty. Okay, never mind. He really loves to hee hee hee, don't he? I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the day on that day at that location. Huh? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to this case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? I don't know how you say that. Affidavit? And who is this from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out the, to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3pm that day. Was it a blackout? All the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurs at approximately 3pm. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. Ah. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Hmm, I see. Apparently the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Uh-oh. That's not sounding good, because if Phoenix pushed him into it, it could have snapped and zapped. Shoot. However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it had been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Hmm, Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the case at the cause of the severed cable? Your Honor. I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Okay. I mean, I would say Phoenix, but surely that just screws us. So that sounds like a really bad idea. I'll go with it, I guess. Phoenix. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony? He said that after he pushed the victim, he had a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3pm, correct? Oh, the sharp noise could have actually just been it disconnecting or something. 
not necessarily zapping him. Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that the lab equipment lost power at 255, which fits right in Mr. Wright's timeline? In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mrs. Waller to be electrocuted. No, 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 no. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. But what's that supposed to mean? Take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. Ah, of course! For some reason I just assumed it flew out of his hand or somebody moved it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. That's right, the victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the fog around here. Ah! In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Order. Order in the court. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could... Okay, never mind. Uh, Mr. Judge, sir? May I say something? The Madam Attorney's explanation... She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. What the? Of course. Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Uh, puppy dog eyes. Of course it's alright. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colours. Hmm. What I witnessed, part two. Part two. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first time was onto the ele into the electrical pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than a minute. Okay, so now she's trying to say that Phoenix did cause it. What? <laughs> the first testimony, she said he didn't do anything. Ah, uh, suck a dick. So after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney. But I, I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Blah, blah. Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Faye, you may proceed with your cross-examination. What a do <laughs> I can't believe it, she's trying to frame Phoenix. Phoenix! Truth is, Phoenix, or Feeny, pushed him twice. I have an electrical pole, cable broke, tried his best to run away from him. Caught up and crashed into him from behind. So it all occurred in less than a minute. Hmm. So, we have the student's testimony. At 2.55. Wait, so cable snapping and him being electrocuted occurred in less than a minute. Wait, that says... Oh, it can't have. Yeah, because that says five. So at five past three, and his watch ceased to function once he got electrocuted. So if the power went out at... F that was ten minutes, not one. Aha! I object to your... Crap. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. The watch. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05pm. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? 
My point is this. What time was it when the, s the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? I'm pretty sure you could have used either one of these bits of evidence and both would have been brought up. Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55pm. Ah! I still want his hair to fly off his head. It's just what I want to see. Would you care to explain to the co- Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? What exactly happened during this 10 minute interval? Ooh. The defense proposes that it was during this interval that a real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Bloody hell. This is nonsense. The real murderer. Oh god, we're going back and forth. Even you can't deny that the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Objection! But then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene was there a window of opportunity for the real killer. Miss Faye, is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? Of course I am. It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We are ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Fay. Now then, Miss Fay, let's have it. Who is the real killer? It could only be the Miss Cute. It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. Where? How, how can you? Of course they're going to object. The defense is grasping, grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order, order, Miss Faye. W what? I mean, why? That is to say, <laughs> Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Ooh. Damn. How can you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I didn't do anything. Miss Faye, this is a very serious charge you are. Wait. That was Phoenix! Ah, oh, that was great. Your Honor. But please, I have something I want to say. <laughs> Had you. You, you, you. What is it? Please. Please strike everything the defense said just now from the record. What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. But Dolly, she... She couldn't do something like that. Oh, God. Why do they have to be a couple? Mr. Wright, I thought you'd say get your ass back to your seat. Ugh. Get back to your seat. Or in your seat. Bailiff, grab that man. <laughs> achoo, achoo. Leave my dolly alone. Achoo, cough. Ah, <sighs> that boy. Oh, Grossberg. He's got himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Ah! Thank you so much. This is exa exactly what I was hoping for. You better take a good look at it. It, uh... Details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Oh. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne? What do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I... No, that is... I... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, oh, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. Oh my god. That is, I, uh, um... Go right ahead. Madame Faye, are you seriously accusing of killing my sweet doggy? The nick of time. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, I am. Not only am I saying... You murdered Doug Swallow. But you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. Jesus. I told you that you should let me handle this. <laughs> Weep. 
Uh, sorry, please, go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. Ah, I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. I should probably read that at some point. Wait, what? Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... The sa that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. She looks the exact same. Although, to be fair, it was only eight months. People don't change that much in under a year. Never mind. <laughs> I made it... I, uh, God. I made it sound like it was years. <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> Your Honor. The defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But further testimony? What about? How about the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright? What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, has a very good reason. Dunk. Very well then. The court grants the defense's request. 